third round. Guzman must be wondering how Olivar is still in there with him, but he is. Guzman in the gold trunks keep the punches up. He's in danger of getting a point deduction, I would say. Guzman, he's had a couple of warnings about that already, and he's got away with, uh, well, a couple of others, I'd say. It's the ones above the waistband that Oliver's really worried about. Well, that's that's true. There's so many good ones, especially that right hand. And he does throw the, the combinations well, the, the left hook and the straight right exceptionally well. Guzman was good enough to get in the Olympic team, by the way, in 1996 for his country. He had over 300 amateur bouts. So he is no rookie, as I think you can see. <laughs> The great survival instinct so far from Oliver. I was hurt by the body shot. Covered up from that. The left to the body. Winding the right hook up. Really on top. Looking confident now. He knows he's hurt Oliver. Has Oliver got anything to come back with? And stop Guzman on the way in. Ten of his 18 wins inside schedule, Oliver doesn't suggest he's a hugely concussive puncher <laughs> for the WBO Super Bantamweight Championship let me remind you at 8 stone 10 pounds yes the big names in this division have moved up Pereira Morales but this man's just fitting the bill nicely in that division more heavy shots he really is teeing off on poor old Oliver who goes down from the body punch it had to happen sooner or later I don't know how he stayed up that long he'll get a mandatory eight is he going to get up? no he's not, he's had enough of it and Juan Guzman becomes the WBO super bantamweight champion with an electric performance at Cardiff Castle and Fabio Oliver was never ever allowed to be in the fight well you couldn't really fault that performance he did everything right constant pressure you know, he just had too much right from the start for Fabio Oliver and really never give him a chance to get in the fight or to settle well I was going to say this division has had something of a charisma bypass operation hasn't it since Morales and Barrera moved up to featherweight but hang on a minute here might be a new star, and there's that fellow Mane Macau as well around. <laughs> yeah, he's very good, Macau. And a fight with them, a unification, would be something very exciting. But he's good, he's strong, he's solid, and he can punch. And he's going to go home with some very fond memories of Wales and Cardiff Castle in particular. The scenic setting for his coronation as the WBO Super Bantamweight title. Juan Guzman, Little Tyson, as they call him, has arrived in the big league here. Well, he walks like Tyson. He never let Oliva into the fight. Kept the pressure on all the time. Pretty ruthless. Got a bit of a, a boxing brain as well. Look for the shots. And eventually the, the body punching took its toll. Well, Agapito Sanchez... Poor old Sanchez, who lost his title with his uh, cataract problem, eye problems. Lost his title out of the ring, but it stays in the Dominican Republic with this fella, Juan Guzman. Well, just stayed on his knees, never looked like getting to his feet, and the referee just had to wave it over. Now that surprised me, there's a celebration from Guzman, which wasn't quite as good as his performance. <laughs> he's got to work on the, on yeah. the acrobatics a little bit, but yes, the, the boxing he's pretty good at. Yeah, he, forget the circus, he can <laughs> stay, stay in the ring. He was a ringmaster here, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute, ten seconds in round number three. A referee in charge, Jose Rivera, reaches the count of ten. The winner by way of knockout. He is still undefeated. And now the new WBO Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Joanna Guzman.
wasn't that interesting. He was actually mouthing the words in unison with Jimmy Lennon there. WBO Super Bantamweight Champion of the World. It's probably the only words of English he knows. <laughs> well, that's the ones he's interested in. And he got that title in tremendous style. Good stuff. Great start to the night. Let's hope it carries on like that. Well, at that rate of progress, his English will improve, and so will his reputation around the world. 26 years of age, Barry Jones. Is he the star that this division is looking for in the making? Well, they certainly need one, and everyone loves a puncher, so who knows? He came out looking menacing, and he sure was, because he's a hell of a puncher for a small guy. He looked impressive, won up against much, but, you know, it's hard to tell, time will tell. But as you say, they're looking for a superstar in the super bantamweight division, so... That could be the man. With no disrespect to Oliva, there are obviously going to be tougher tests should he go on to become a potential man to unify the division. But you know, you made the step suddenly into world class. It when you get your big opportunity, it's very difficult to bring all the lessons you've learned to bear. When somebody puts that belt around your waist, it's, you know, you just don't want to give it away for love or money. And it's, I think, you know, it, you grow with confidence, all of a sudden you believe you're a, you're a, you're a world class and a world champion. And... Um, Hopefully it comes out in people's performances. Nicky, did you get the little free son of excitement around the arena here at Cardiff Castle? I, I think so. I think, I think we watched something a bit special there. I mean, he really lived up to his nick nickname, the Mini Tyson. And, uh, I, I mean, the other world champions, Willie Hillary, we know him from Bro Michael Brody. He's um, had a charmed life, hasn't a, he? A charmed life, exactly. You know, <laughs> he's uh, a few lucky decisions. Manny Pacqua, we've seen very good. I haven't seen Sato, the WBA champion, but that guy, I think, is as good as, um, as any of them. And I think it will really uh, make it a good mix-up between quite a few of them. Let's get the view of the former European Super Bantamweight champion, Sp